There are five grand palaces in Seoul. This one is Gwanghwigun. Now, Gwanghwigun was constructed in the later portion of the Joseon Dynasty. In fact, 10 kings actually called this palace home. And while normally it was used as a place to reside during times of emergency, it didn't stop the Japanese from completely obliterating it during the occupational period to make room for Japanese school. Now, the government here in Seoul actually reconstructed the palace to about one third its original size. And it's what we see here today. Because it is so small, admission is free it's also home to two museums that offer free admission on the fourth Sunday of every month. Gwanghwigun was also called Palace of Shining Celebration. It was also referred to as the Mulberry Palace because of the large number of mulberry trees that were planted here for silk cultivation. This is Dongni Moon Gate. It marks the point of official communication between Koreans and China in the past. On one side of the gate is Chinese, and that side faces China. On this side, there's Hangul, representing Korea. Construction began in 1896 and finished in 1897. This is Independence Hall, so named by So J. Pill, Korea's independence movement's leader. Now, the original building was called Mo Kwa Hwang, and it's where the Chinese envoys stayed during their official business here in Korea. This is Solomon Prison. Now, after the Koreans got their independence from China at the end of the 19th century, the Japanese came in 1910. This is where they housed their political prisoners. Now, for extreme cases of solitary confinement here in Southern Moon Prison, you'd have the wall coffin.
Now I'm too big to be in there. Lord knows what it would have been like to be stuck in there for a whole week. Now through the door behind me is a rather gruesome sight. It's where the executions took place here at Sodomoon. I've hoped you enjoy these sights of soul. We'll see you next time.